Uh, a lot of people call me Colonel Sanders today. Hello. <laughs> Where's your drumstick, Dunnigan? <laughs>
putting where you're at in context right now? Well, we don't kid ourselves. That was last year, like you just said, three times in the opening question. But we have a core group of veterans here and players who know what it's like to be in this position and to achieve something like we did last year. And we don't look to the past, but we did set a standard that we can learn from and that we can continue to help each other grow. And uh, we just got to be more consistent. I'd like to get more Bear Woods on the show. Eskimos and Stampeders, a fierce rivalry always. Duke Williams, Don Jackson continuing that rivalry. Darrell Walker taking a hard hit here. Cannot hold on. His leg gets tangled up. Walker stayed down for a bit. The wideout did not return in this football game. Next, Calgary Stampeders drive. It will be Jackson. It'll toss to the left side. And he gets hit and fumbles and scooped up by Nick Usher. He'll rumble to the 10. Led to a CJ game, a rushing TD, and that tied to the 10. Then remember when we interviewed Usher? Yeah, he was, uh, he was there with someone. I forget who. Sugar Ray Leonard. He was pretty good. Yeah, sure was good. Kamar Jordan's leg gets tangled up here. Everybody was getting injured on Sunday in Calgary. Jordan. Back did not return to this one either. Now late in the half, Gable. Gotta keep it alive. Well, the hurdle a defender. Gable with a hurdle. Really nicely done. Very There's next play, let's mark, listen to the play-by-play -play of Chris Cuthbert. This drive started on the 13. Mike Riley airing it up. Watch Duke Williams. Got him. Touchdown. With Isn't that beautiful? Duke Williams. Eighth of the year. Edmonton up 17-13 at the break. Williams, more trash talk. We're ready. We're ready to dominate. They thought it was going to be sweet. It's going to be a fight to the end. And we ain't playing. And I mean that. And this is what it's going to be. We're going to gas it up some more in the second half. We ain't done yet. I like it. I like that intensity. This is such a great rivalry. Williams mixing it up with everybody. And then later in the third, Get these Bo Levi Mitchell, who is having an incredible season, goes down just as like just buckles. Loose. More flags now. No so. contact, really. Just buckles. Uh -oh. Was able to Those walk off the field. This is... Back to Williams now. This final play of the third quarter. Mike Riley, the pass. Williams coughs it up. And Calgary would take possession. We're jumping to the fourth quarter now. Mitchell back under center. It is time for the TSN turning point. Bo Levi looking for his 15th career fourth quarter game winning drop. One minute to go, tied at 20. Second and 10, he's sacked. And it looks like Edmonton will take the ball over. But Chris Edwards called for illegal contact. That extends the drive. Couple plays later, stamps in midfield. Mitchell to Devaris Daniels. Calgary's in field goal range for El Matador. Rene Paredes. 43 yards Calgary as Calgary wins his seventh straight Labor Day Classic. 23-20 the final. It was there for Edmonton to win. They did not win it. In fact, Calgary's won 11 of their last 13 meetings with Edmonton on Labor Day. Here is Mike Riley. Obviously frustrated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel good. I'm sick of, you know, losing games when we could win if we if we didn't get out of our own way. You know, I think everybody in that room is. But, you know, I, it's not a surprise. We played a very good football game, I thought. I mean, it's it's never going to be easy here. And it came down to a last minute kick to beat us. Um, and so at the end of the day, you take positives from it. But, you know, we got to rebound. We have we have to get it together and beat these guys come Saturday. How are you feeling with your knee? I'm good, man. It's going to, like I said, you got to take my leg off to get me out of this game. Um, I know it's probably not the smartest thing to go back in, but I'm, I'm always going to fight for my team. And until the point where I can't play, I'm going back out there to try and help get a win. Cleveland plays in Toronto this weekend. Josh Donaldson now plays for Cleveland. Jays fans will not see Josh Donaldson this weekend. The Cleve put their newest player on the 10-day DL due to a left calf strain. Donaldson began a rehab stint in AAA Monday, and he hit a grand slam. So, uh, there's that. Uh, Marcus Stroman back from a blister on his finger, making his first start since mid-August. It's the Rays and Jays in the second. Malik Smith, comeback off Stroman's glove. Stroman tries to make the play. Smith beats it out. Ron scores. Matt Duffy up next.
Lines it to left center. It's off the wall. Gets a double. Two more runs coming to score. Four nothing Rays. Two batters later. Tommy Pham at the dish. And Strowman hits him. John Gibbons, seen enough. Strowman can't even get out of the second inning in his return. Maybe on the wrist. As the Rays win this one 7 1. Uh, Vladdy Guerrero watch. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. DHing on Monday in Buffalo's regular season finale. First inning. Guerrero. Gap. Stand up double. His only hit of the day. Grounds into a double play to end the game. Vladdy ends his AAA season hitting 336 with six home runs and 16 RBI. Across four different leagues this season, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. hit 381 with 20 home runs and 78 RBI. Ross Atkins confirmed that Vladdy Jr. will not be called up to the big leagues this month, so that means the Jays will have an additional year of team control over baseball's top prospect. And the Bison season is over, but Vladdy Jr. still has some more baseball to play, heading down to the Arizona Fall League. This is a real nice matchup. Red Sox and Braves, though Boston's won 22 of 26 against the National League opponents, and this is J.D. Martinez. This one down the line, Nick Markakis will fight off this burly gentleman for the baseball in foul territory. Two-time gold glover. More D in the seventh, courtesy of Dansby Swanson, who drops it, recovers, and makes a terrific play. How about Freddie Freeman with the stretch? Like a young Grant Fuhrer. Mookie went one for five with an RBI eighth inning now, three, two, two on two out. Eduardo Nunez chops one to Freeman, and this time his throw to Swanson is off the mark, and all runners are gonna be safe, and that would prove to be very, very costly. Freeman's seventh error. As Ian Kinsler goes the other way. Go-Go Squeeze is advertised at baseball games? Go-Go <laughs> Squeeze, the only way my daughter gets vegetables. <laughs> Boston adds three more in the ninth and they win. As Houston remains two and a half up on Oakland in the division, and Oakland holds on to that final wild, wild card spot. Seattle also won on Monday, by the way. They beat the horrific Baltimore Orioles, so they keep pace, though they are five and a half back in the wild card. What a matchup, Cubs, Brewers, eighth inning, Cubs up by one, two on one out, Jesus Aguilar the two, two. at the dish. Carl Edwards Jr. sits him down to look at Cubs. Catching coach Mike Borsello. fired up. From Edwards, All down here. Next batter's Ryan Braun, 3-2 count. Edwards Jr. believes he has struck out Braun. The ump calls for a walk, and we check it on Borsello. And that's just classic Borsello right there. Cannot believe it. That walk proves costly. Next batter, Edwards appears to throw inside on Mike Moustakis. Joe Madden said, come on, what are you doing to us here? And the ump has heard enough. He says, hey, Joe, hit the showers. And after that was all said and done, they, they chatted up. And then Edwards Jr. walks. Moustakis bringing the run. We have ourselves a tie game. We're off to the ninth inning, the bottom of the ninth. Where the bases are loaded with one out for the hot hitting Christian Yelich. Yeah, Bryant going for the double play, but Yelich is safe. And the Brewers walk it off. Massive victory for them, 4 3 to find. Trevor Story has been quite a story, Dan, since his debut in 2016. One of the MLB's best producers at short. Had to follow in the footsteps of Troy Tulowitzki, and he has done that big time. First pitch, bottom first, takes Madison Bumgarner over the wall. Eighth home run off the first pitch this season, second most in the majors. Fourth story in the fifth. Right, so that is 29 home runs on the year. That is a new season high. He's the fourth player ever to homer off Bumgarner twice in one game. Padres and D-backs, Arizona, a game back of top spot in the NL West. Second inning, two on. Fran Mill Reyes, four home runs in his last eight games. Fran Mill does it again. I assume he's the first Fran Mill in Major League history. 23-year-old, 3-1 Padres. Reyes back up in the fourth, and boomsies! His first career multi-homer game. Arizona's only scored three or more runs in one of their last ten games. Told this fan's trying anything for good luck. 
that a purse on her head? Runners on the corners. Oh, Eric Hosmer. Sack. Hosmer just stole one. She's wore a Eric sack hat. Hosmer oh, now she's oh, wearing space. a drink carton hat. A four Grandma, gold you've had enough. Go home. And Zone. maybe stop wearing those low-cut tops. Zone. Kids watch. Zona loses 6-2, and that's big because uh, the Brewers hold the first wild card spot with the Cards holding on to the final wild card spot. Dodgers won back. Arizona two games behind. And the West, crazy. Colorado just a half game up on the Dodgers. Early Monday, Novak Djokovic won his fourth round match of the U.S. Open to advance to the quarters. It's not important who he defeated. What is important is that Roger Federer played his fourth round match late Monday in a victory would set up a tantalizing quarterfinal matchup between the two superstars. The Raj. Seeking his 54th Grand Slam quarterfinal, facing John Milman. Already up to love, first set. Federer. Wow. 37 years young, wearing Uniqlo. Takes the opener 6-3. I was at Uniqlo today, and Business is good. It's a clothing store. You got it. It is the Japanese H&M. Millman reaches the drop shot. Federer chips it up top. Five-time U.S. Open champ. Poor Millman. But Federer would blow two set points at 5-4. Now 5-all Federer with a backhand that can only be described as O'Toole-esque. One of 22 unforced errors. Next game, Federer serving to force a tiebreak. Millman. A perfect passing shot. He's made it. And the Raj drops his first set of the tourney. Third set tie break. Roger. Routine volley. Finds the net. Where's the Merka reaction shot? Now 7 all Millman. Oh, paints the baseline. Millman 0 and 10 lifetime against top 10 players. He goes up two sets to one. There's Merka. Uh, you mentioned my tennis skills. If you ever want to feel good about your tennis game, play a, a 10 and a 7-year-old that have never played tennis before. I'm teaching my daughters how to play, and they think I'm like Roger Federer at this point. They'll learn. <laughs> They'll learn quickly. Daddy, you can get it over the net. Daddy, you're good. Bjorn Borg, Daddy? <laughs> Le'Veon Bell's holdout with the Pittsburgh Steelers continues. He still has not signed the team's $14.5 million franchise tag. He also held out last season, as you may remember, but he ultimately signed the franchise tender and reported on the Friday before Labor Day. Bell has the second most yards from scrimmage since entering the league in 2013, one of the league's very best running backs, reportedly turned down Pittsburgh's five-year, $70 million contract offer in the offseason. Steelers GM Kevin Colbert released this statement on Monday. That sounds like something a PR person wrote. Yeah, it's Had two true. years to clear this up. It, it's it's it just seems to happen every year. He's only played in two of possible five season openers in his entire career. Don't you just find middle ground and sign this guy? Because Pittsburgh, a lot of people feel Super Bowl contenders have a great chance to win it this year. Well, yeah, sign this guy, get him and make him happy. Uh, in Philly, the number one question heading into week one, who will start under center Thursday against the Falcons? Now, after it was reported on Saturday that Nick Foles would be getting the start, head coach Doug Peterson, uh, he was pretty irritated. Uh, yeah, because they didn't put the words in his mouth. They just said that Foles would be the starter, right? Anyway. Yeah, uh, Ian Rappaport from the NFL Network reported that. Yeah, 24 hours later, Peterson changed his tune and answered the question. All right, this won't take long. Um, after consideration and everything and about the football team and, and, and this decision, uh, Nick Foles is a starter uh, week one. If they don't sell uh, at Lincoln Financial Field, if they don't sell visors with a wig that has Doug Peterson's hair on top of it, then they're missing out on an incredible marketing opportunity <laughs> because I would absolutely buy uh, those hats. We mentioned this uh, on Sunday. Guess who has that? opener of the season. Whoa, new graphics! Boom! I framed it as the opener of the season, also known as the season opener. <laughs> Thursday, CTV2 and TSN. Uh, we should mention that uh, Carson Wentz has still not been cleared for contact. Uh, in Buffalo, the Bills have named Nathan Peterman their <laughs> starting quarterback for week one. Oh, Bills fans. Peterman led all Bills quarterbacks 
in completion percentage and passer rating in the preseason. 2018 seventh overall pick Josh Allen will serve as the backup. Yeah, who's the biggest Bills fan? Producer Tim. It's hilarious. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a great year. The Bills made that announcement on Twitter, which prompted this response from Sports Illustrated's Jimmy Traina. I'm not a lawyer, but Kent Colin Kaepernick just show up to court with this tweet and win his case against the NFL? It's an excellent point by Jimmy Traina. See, some people know how to use Twitter. Yeah. Kaepernick, speaking of, who's suing NFL owners for collusion to keep him out of the NFL, headlines Nike's new just do it campaign this was all over social media on monday kaepernick shared the new ad on twitter showing a picture of his face with the caption believe in something even if it means sacrificing everything now he's the official apparel company of the nfl and has had kaepernick under contract since 2011 but had not used him in advertising in the past two years kaepernick started to kneel for the u.s national anthem back in august of 2016 he remains a free agent after last playing in the nfl two seasons ago and uh, now people are burning their Nikes and it's just which as someone pointed out if you're burning your Nikes that's also a form of protest yeah uh, Serena Williams uh, she sent a tweet in support of Kaepernick uh, Odell Beckham Jr. LeBron James they're all involved in the campaign as well uh, we've seen people do some strange things with food over the years and this fan at the US Open adds to the list as she this is all over social media decided to dip her chicken finger into a glass of cola just casually double dipping the chicken finger and just like the time when we tried pizza dipped in soy sauce because Jeannie Bouchard said she liked yep. it we figured we've got to try this a chicken finger dipped into a cola I I've seen people dip french fries into ice cream cones uh, but never chicken uh, I'm gonna get a good dip here Oh, it's not bad. It's, um, I'm getting, it's actually Diet Cola, so I'm getting just a nice hint of aspartame. <laughs> That's a beautiful touch. It softens the up the chicken. And this thing is, then this is catching on. Our stats guy, Hound Dog Harrison, also enjoying a chicken finger dipped in cola. Mm. Right? Mm. Pretty yummy. Hound Dog, I assume, uh, mm. I assume you saw the video and decided to try it. What video? Never mind. Right. When we come back. Now you got chicken in your drink. The greatest sports awards segment in the history of canoes. The Jannies. The Jannies. That's how Jay and I spent our summer. We canoed around Canada, portaged a lot. Like Sherpa. young Pierre Elliott Trudeau's. Mira Sharapova well, should have been an easy smash, but Carlos Suarez, Navarro guesses right, puts it into the open court. Suarez, Navarro won in straight sets. Tigers and White Sox tied at two in the ninth. Matt Davidson, two run shot to left. That's not why we're showing you this. Check out teammate Yolmer Sanchez, douses himself with Gatorade instead of saving it for Davidson. <laughs> I love that. And he dumped the best of all the Gatorades, the fruit punch flip. There's the first hit of the afternoon. Ronald Cunha Jr., great rookie season. And Nunez ended up on the blooper reel, though. Slipped in the outfield. Ah, uh, grass, it gets slippery. He'll be okay. Let's go back to that uh, Eskimos Stampeders Labor Day classic game as Mike Riley dumps it off for C.J. Gable and he lunges over the defense to pick up a couple of extra yards. Mentioned Josh Donaldson at a grand slam in a rehab game in AAA. Uh, yeah, didn't believe me? Well, there you go. Video evidence. You've seen him hit many out there before. Jeremiah Miss. Oh, sorry. Can you say something? I just said proof. Bonk. Jeremiah Masoli has hit the upright uh, three times in the last two games, <laughs> including once in the Labor Day Classic on Monday. Ryan Braun. Oh, okay. Let me judge this dive. Was it? Oh, that was needed. I think so. That was a well-needed dive. This is pretty cool, Dan. You're gonna love this. In Pittsburgh, a fan is wearing a Votto for President shirt. 
Joey Votto, Votto asks Aston for it, gets it and then in exchange return, for a signed jersey. Gives the fan a signed jersey. Now, Votto now the thing is, is Canada, so Votto signed it. Become president. Where's the son for president? Uh, for prime minister, because Votto can't be the president because he was born in Canada. Very true. Plays of the week time. My favorite play is this guy. Love him. Love you, Papa. So, you know Glow, they have shorts, shirts, all the clothes? They have all the clothes, Dave. Fortnite, Dan, Fortnite. It's a, it's a viral sensation. In some cases, the video game has become a distraction for some pro athletes. TSN writer Rick Westhead tweeted last week, an OHL team employee tells me some players have been advised to scrub Fortnite references from social media accounts. Some NHL teams consider the video game a major distraction slash obsession. And we just want to say that if you're a hockey player who's playing too much Fortnite, there's help. Are you a hockey player obsessed with Fortnite? Do you feel as if your career is shrinking smaller and smaller? Help is waiting at the Sportright Rehabilitation Center. At Sportright, we've helped dozens of professionals knock and then eliminate their Fortnite obsession with our simple Royale program that weans players from Fortnite to Golden, to Ms. Pac-Man, to returning to training camp. We'll help you get away from the controller and get you in control of the greatest game of all, hockey. Call Sportright at 177-842-7695. That's 177-VIC-ROYAL. Your player handle is completely confidential. Don't let it be game over for your future. The Sportright Rehabilitation Center. We had to Google most of the words in this commercial. <laughs> That's true. true. It is I true. have no idea. <laughs> Still the cop. We taped our first podcast since July. It's a recap of our summer vacations, and we have a special guest join us, Tessa Bonhomme. Find uh, the podcast wherever you find podcasts. It's the worst play of the day. U.S. Open Junior Girls Single, 17-year-old Yasmin Mansouri loses 7-5 in the third set. Smashes her racket. Look at this rage. 7-5, 7-5. And then she hurts her finger. That's brought to you by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. Remember Pat O'Brien was the guy who used to host uh, Access Hollywood. And it's not the same, is it? It's not. I had Pat O'Brien. That's how he used to talk. We went on a show once. Yeah, yeah. And I have, haven't heard from him <laughs> since. He also made a, some phone calls he wishes he hadn't made. Uh, we didn't blow it. We didn't blow anything, according to our uh, star producer-in-waiting, Andrew Zwarich, who works on our show and refuses to cut his hair. Uh, how's the chicken sit? Pretty good. Pretty good, actually. Really good. I think that aspartame is really, you know... But you know where... Keeps it nicely. It was from producer Tim's Diet Pepsi stash. Yeah. So now, what? Why, why are you saying seriously? Oh, he's mad now. Oh, Tim's I upset. Thought, I thought we were, like, upsetting a sponsor. I'm yeah. like, it's only we're mentioning a, a soda. Yeah. So sorry about that. He is irate right Yeah, now. Tim is really upset because he cherishes those things. Really let the, like the his pop own, out of the bag. Like his own children. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, man. I'm fixing to wind it up and just get after it. Start blowing some minds. 